اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد 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 اللهم صل وسلم وانعم واكرم وبارك على حبيبنا وشفيعنا وقرة عيوننا سيدنا محمد في الأولين اللهم صل وسلم وانعم واكرم وبارك على حبيبنا وشفيعنا وقرة عيوننا سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم في الملأ الأعلى إلى يوم الدين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد الفاتح لما أغلق الخاتم لما سبق ناصر الحق بالحق والهادي إلى صراطك المستقيم وعلى آله وصحبه حق قدره ومقداره العظيم بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولا ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله اللهم صل وسلم وأنعم وأكرم وبارك على حبيبنا وشفيعنا وقرة عيوننا سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه في الأولين وفي الآخرين وفي الملأ الأعلى إلى يوم الدين We ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى to bless this gathering and to make this a gathering of light and a gathering of healing a gathering of increase, a gathering of forgiveness, a gathering of beautification we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us to that which is pleasing to Him. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to purify our hearts and our intentions and to grant us His tawfiq, His divine aid and success in this journey in life. Ya Allah, we ask you to accept from us our humble efforts to make our words and our actions, our hearts and our minds and our behaviors and our thoughts and our realities, ones that are fully pleasing to you and in line with what? You have sent to your beloved Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya Allah, make us of those who follow in the way of Al-Habib Al-Mustafa Al-Mujtaba Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya Allah, we ask you to place us on the pathway of the righteous, the pathway of the salihin, the pathway of the awliya, the pathway of your close friends and companions. Ya Allah, we ask you to take <coughs> us by our hands to you as you take those most dignified and elect of servants of yours, Ya Rabbil Alameen, Allahumma Ameen, Barakallahu Fikum, uh, my dear brothers and sisters, it's as always a pleasure and an honor to be here uh, and to share with you this time uh, on Friday, uh, the evening of Jumu'ah, uh, where we come together in the spirit of dhikr and fikr, in remembrance and contemplation and thought, to enter into a spiritual place where we seek to purify ourselves and to glorify Allah and to Send salawat upon his beloved messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You know, these are uh, blessed days, uh, the days of Rajab. And shortly thereafter is the month of Sha'ban. And then we have the sacred and blessed month of Ramadan. For Allahumma balighna Ramadan. Oh Allah, bless our Rajab and bless our Sha'ban. Wa balighna Ramadan. And ya Allah, make us of those who will worship you. Uh, and be witness to the blessed and sacred month of Ramadan. Do not deprive us from the blessed month of Ramadan. And ya Allah, if you have taken some of your servants in before the month of Ramadan, all of our loved ones who have passed, all of our family and our friends and our mashayikh and our teachers who have passed before the blessed month of Ramadan, Ya Allah, we ask you to grant them all uh, the reward and the abundance and the forgiveness and the mercy of the sacred and blessed month of Ramadan. Allahumma ameen, ya Rabbil Alameen. Inshallah ta'ala, brothers and sisters, we will be reflecting on the 48th hikmah, the 48th wisdom of Ibn Ata'illah in his aphorisms, where he says, مِنْ عَلَامَاتِ مَوْتِ الْقَلْبِ عَدَمُ الْحُزْنِ عَلَى مَا فَاتَكَ مِنَ الْمُوَافَقَاتِ مِنْ عَلَامَاتِ مَوْتِ الْقَلْبِ عَدَمُ الْحُزْنِ عَلَى مَا فَاتَكَ مِنَ الْمُوَافَقَاتِ وترك الندم على ما فعلته من وجود الزلات وترك الندم على ما فعلته من وجود الزلات A sign of the heart's death is the absence of sadness over the acts of obedience you have neglected and the abandonment of regret over the mistakes you have made a sign of the heart's death is the absence of sadness over the acts of obedience you have neglected. May Allah forgive us. 
and the abandonment of regret over the mistakes you have made. May Allah forgive us. Allahumma amin ya rabbal alameen. Here, Ibn Atayillah is talking to us about that element of our existence that is the focal point of who we are. The space and the place and the mawdi'a of al-nadharu al-ilahi, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks upon. Allah looks at the hearts. He looks at the hearts. He observes the hearts. And the heart is the focal point of our true life. It is the mihwar. It is the essential element of what makes the human being truly alive or dead. It's not a question of the physical life. The person who is physically alive may have his organs or her organs and physiology functioning in a way where machinery would affirm that this person is technically alive. But the true life, the true reality, where a being comes into fullness and wholeness is when the heart is alive. And so when Ibn Atayla is talking to us about the signs of a dead heart, this is something that should uh, be a cause of pause and, and thoughtfulness and concern. And I immediately should ask myself, you know, wait, hold on. Is my heart alive or is my heart dead? What's the state of my heart? Because if you recall from last week, wisdom number 47, the whole discussion was about Ibn Ata'illah almost pleading with us, saying, do not neglect remembrance, dhikr, under any circumstance. If you recall and you were with us last week, and if you didn't, please go back and listen. But it was all about, do not stop making dhikr, regardless of what's going on. Because that is an indication that there's still life within that heart. And so then he's telling us in number 48, well, if you really want to assess critical signs to see what is the state of the health of your heart, we'll assess to what degree you actually find regret or sadness. If you neglect the matters of this deen that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has asked us to fulfill. You know, how remorseful am I when I miss those things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in His infinite wisdom, in His infinite majesty, in His infinite mercy has asked me to fulfill. What is the state of my heart? How does my heart react to missing out on what the most gracious and the most merciful, the most magnificent has asked me to do? And what is the state of my heart when I do something that is deeply displeasing to Allah, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded me not to do, that we know that Allah dislikes that we may do. What is then the reaction of my heart? Because see, it's, it's, it's the vacillations of life, it's the reverberations, the back and forth, the ebbs and the flows. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a full-on experience that we're going through. And so the question that we have to pose to ourselves is, well, is my heart alive or dead? Is it healthy or unhealthy? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Al-Shu'ara about the Day of Judgment. And He says, يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالٌ وَلَا بَنُونَ إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٌ Surah Al-Shu'ara, verse 88. That on the day when nothing is of benefit, nothing benefits us. No wealth, no physical health, no family, no children, nothing. Nothing will benefit us except those who come to Allah with sound hearts. بِقَلْبٍ salim, And salim means salimun. Salim means sound. It means well. It means healthy. Except who come to Allah with healthy hearts. Allahumma ja'alna min ahli هَذِهِ الْقُلُوبِ May Allah make us amongst the people who have Qulub salima, you know, sound and healthy hearts. So that when on that day we're standing in front of Allah, and the day that it really matters what we've done and what we haven't done and, and how we've reacted to Allah and 
and what we neglected and what we didn't neglect and what we fulfilled and what we regret and and what forgiveness we've saw and etc. When all of it matters, it's going to be the heart, the sound, healthy heart. May Allah grant us sound, healthy hearts on that moment. Allah says in Surah Al-Anfal, number, verse number two, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهُ وَجِلَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ وَإِذَا تُلِيَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتُهُ زَادَتْهُمْ إِيمَانًا وَعَلَى رَبِّهِمْ يَتَوَكَّلُونَ That verily the believers, the ones who truly believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, are those who when Allah is mentioned, إِذَا ذُكِرَ الله, When you just hear Allah, when Allah has said, and Allah says, and Allah commands and Allah prohibits the believer when they hear Allah wajilat qulubuhum their hearts tremble in tranquility wa idha tuliyat alayhim ayatuh and if the signs and the verses and the ayat of Allah are <clears throat> relayed to you zadathum imana their belief their commitment their love of Allah it multiplies it increases وَعَلَىٰ رَبِّهِمْ يَتَوَكَّلُونَ And upon Allah they truly rely. You know, that's, a, that's a heart that's alive. It hears Allah and it trembles, it gasps, it, it shudders. And when the verses and the signs and the, the blessing, the revelation is revealed, is, is conveyed, is relayed to us, our, our belief in Allah only grows. We find ourselves getting closer and longing more and more for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the result of that is we only trust in Allah. We only rely upon Allah. You know, we, we begin to find ourselves not in need <laughs> of, of everything beyond the soundness of a heart that is connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because we realize everything else is just tangential. It's circumstantial. You know, it doesn't have a reality in of itself. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in a in a in a in a moment of 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 concern and a remorseful reminder. He says, Waman Avlamu Mimman Dukira bi ayati rabbi. And who could be more wrong than the person who is reminded of Allah's message and Allah's revelation? Fa'arada anha. And they turn their back on it. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, how, how wrong? How wrong could a person be? How, how oppressive can a person be to themselves? When you hear this beautiful light, this beautiful guidance is, is revealed to you, it's relayed to you, but you turn away from it. Ignoring what his hands are storing up for him, you know, مَا قَدَّمَتْ يَدَهُ What I've done, because I've done things. You and I, we've done things. Allah has revealed to us, He's guided us, He's shown us, He's sent us by His generosity and by His grace and by His beauty and by His mahabba, His love and His wood, His unconditional love. But we've done things. So Allah says, إِنَّا جَعَلْنَا عَلَىٰ قُلُوبِهِمْ أَكِنَّةً أَنْ يَفْقَهُ وَفِي آذَانِهِمْ وَقَرَىٰ we have put covers over their hearts so they cannot we have put covers over their hearts so they cannot understand and we have put heaviness in their ears and if you call them to guidance they will never accept it. You know, this is Allah telling the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there are those who because of their i'rad, because of their turning away and their rejection and their insistence upon turning away from the guidance of the Qur'an and Sunnah, then what happens? A seal is placed over that heart. And the heart becomes deadened, hardened. Uh, they don't hear. And even if it gets through, they reject it. فَلَنْ يَهْتَدُوا إِذَنْ أَبَدًا They'll never, subhanAllah. 
than be guided or never accept it. And this is this is a painful thing to hear. Surah Al-Anfal, verse number 22, it's very painful to hear this. That this is the reality of some hearts in this world. And, you know, people, I don't, I don't want any of us to hear these ayat and to think, you know, are there any to think about anything other than what do I have to do to protect my heart? You know, so, so often our minds want to go into other places. Well, why is this the case? And why would God seal people's hearts? And why doesn't God just do this? And why doesn't God just do that? Aina man nahnu hatta naqulu dhalik. Like, who are we to say these things? Who are we to to reject? Or to, this is this is the divine revelation. Allah is talking to us. He's telling you and I, beware, be weary. Yes, be careful. You know, we have to worry about the extent to which potentially my heart may be sealed because I've turned away so much. I've rejected so much. I've neglected so much. May Allah forgive us and guide us. Allah says to us in Surah Al-Kahf, verse number 28, You know, don't follow those whose hearts are heedless of us. You know, there are those in this world whose hearts don't care about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, they just don't care about what Allah cares about or what Allah loves. They neglect that reality wholesale. And so Allah is saying, don't follow those individuals. You know, that that they all they do is they follow their whims they follow their desires and their reality is is an unbridled one you know it's just it's it's unfettered it's 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 it's, it's derailed in its nature don't follow those individuals because they're not holding in on to anything real you know it's a it's a it's a dismembered reality so find those whose hearts are mindful of allah are thoughtful of Allah. Find people in your life who are going to be people who tell you about Allah or remind you about Allah. Even if it's people in your life that maybe you don't like the way they talk to you about Allah, but they still at least say Allah. You know, sometimes we don't like a family member who all they do is want to talk to us about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we find it to be heavy. But you know, alhamdulillah, that Allah has placed someone in my life who who cares about Allah in a way, and I don't need to judge that person. I don't need to busy myself judging that person or the quality of what that person's religiosity really is and how fake or real or honest or sincere. That's just don't busy yourself with that stuff. The fact is that there is someone in my life who says Allah, who cares about Allah, God, who celebrates Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We need those people in our lives. And that's, that's the truth of it. So may Allah grant us that. And Allah is saying, don't follow people who don't care. And I say this to, you know, to young people who are listening, and even some of the elderly who are listening. You may go, you may be in school, at work, you know, in the all sorts of places in life. You may have friends. If if the people around you, if they don't really care about Allah, they don't care to remind you about Allah, you have to be careful about following those people. I'm not saying you have to break off your relationships or be antagonistic. No. But know where you are and who you are. And that is that we are, inshallah, by Allah's grace and permission, we are His servants. And that the only thing that truly matters is the extent to which my heart is connected to Allah. And that my heart trembles in tranquility at the remembrance of Allah. Allah says in Surah Al-Anfal, verse number 22, that the worst of creatures in God's eyes are those who are willfully deaf and dumb and do not think. They do not use their minds. This is what Allah describes as being what the worst of creations because they chose to willfully not listen when it was conveyed to them. This is not in reference, by the way, to the physical deafness or the, the physical 
muteness. No, this is in reference to the spiritual deafness. And this is the haqiqah of deafness. You know, it is the heart, it is the hearts that 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 you know the heart and the the spiritual heart, the spiritual apparatus that goes blind and that goes deaf and that goes dumb. It's not the physical per se. And so what this should make us think about is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who created the human being, created the human being's capacity to hear and to see and to think and reflect. He's saying that the worst of these types are those who have this apparatus, this capacity, these senses, the ability to hear the revelation when it is revealed, to see the results of that revelation, to see the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to have the capacity to think you and I, we're sitting here, we're able to think and reflect, we're able to choose to read or not read, to contemplate or not contemplate. We have that choice. We're, we have the choice to heed or not heed. Allah says, you know, believe or disbelieve. And so, but those worst in that category who have this apparatus, but they don't use it. And Allah does not love that. And he says, وَلَوْ عَلِمَ اللَّهُ فِيهِمْ خَيْرًا لَأَسْمَعَهُمْ وَلَوْ أَسْمَعَهُمْ لَتَوَلَّوْ وَهُمْ مُعْرِضُونَ And if God had known there was any good in them, He would have made them hear. But even if He had, they would still have turned away and taken no notice. Why? Because the same thing, أُعْرِضُوا You know, <laughs> they, they, you know, أعرضوا, they turned away in the in, in here. You know, they لتولوا, they, they, it's presented to them, but they turn back. They turn their back on it. They turn away from it. You know, we have to be careful. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala sends us, you know, messengers of the messenger in all sorts of ways, all sorts of forms. Allah sends us reminders and and things to think about. You know, you listen to the. Khatib on a Friday, you hear a khatira, you you receive a meme, you you, you know an, an auntie sends you a dua, <laughs> a dua in the in the in, in your uh, um, your text message. You know you have those realities, and and what happens? Do you remember? Do you heed? Do you think? Do you contemplate over them, or do you just reject? A verse, an ayah of the Quran is sent to you over WhatsApp. Do you contemplate it? Do you think about it, or you just neglect? Do I just find myself in this, you know, successions of neglect and rejection and deletion, just thinking, okay, you know, later, later, inshallah, later, at some point, maybe, but I don't get to it. So what happens when I turn away time and time again? I have to ask myself a serious question here because what is time and how much time do I actually have to keep on turning my back? To keep on doing this tawallaw, to turn away this i'rad. Allah, nas'alullah salama. You know, these are serious questions we have to pose to ourselves because it's this is the life that we're talking about. Because immediately the next verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, verse number 24, Surah Al Anfal, Ya yuha ladina amanu, istajibu lillahi, walir rasuli, ida da'akum lima yuhikum, wa'alamu anna Allah yahulu bayna al mar'i wa kalbih. Believers respond to Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam When He calls you To that which brings you life To that which gives you life See this is it What is going to give us life See you and I We want to be alive I don't want to be amongst the walking dead I don't want to Wake up every single day Feeling dead and dreary And aimless and 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 just feeling at a you know at a deep sense of loss and anxiety and anguish about my life and what am I even doing? I don't want that feeling. You don't want that feeling. So Allah is saying, yeah, amanu stajibu. You know, respond to Allah and His Messenger when He is calling you to that which gives you life. That gives our heart. That will bring our hearts to life. That will exit us from the multitudes of darkness, min al zulumati ila nur to light, to the light, the light, Allahu nur. He is the light, jalla fi ula. And know this, wa alamu an Allah yahulu bain al mar'i wa qalbi. And know that God comes between a man and his heart. Wa anhu ilayhi tuhsharun. And ultimately, and that you. 
will be gathered to him Jalla fi ula. You know, this idea of an Allah yahulu al mar'i wa qalbi that Allah comes between the individual and their heart. You know, this idea is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He has a distinct type of ownership over the heart. He is the one who is between us and our hearts and our spiritual hearts. He is the one who can grant us access to the true life of the heart. So to get to our spiritual hearts that you and I all have within us, we need divine permission. Allah has to give us access to our hearts because He controls the hearts. Al-Qulubu bayna asabi' al-Rahman You know, the, the, in the hadith that the, the hearts are between the, the, the hands of the, the fingers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ta'ala Allah on the tashbih and tamthil that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we are our, our hearts are in his hands yuqallibuha kayfa yasha that he he alters the hearts as he he sees fit so what do you and I have to do hearing that does not mean well if I have no control over my heart then Allah has all control then what's the point of even trying no that means is I have to beg Allah I have to remember Allah. I have to abide to the commands of Allah in a way that ensures that He will give me access to the spirit, to the to the realms of the spiritual heart, so I can then be elevated. You know that I can I can be brought to life. You know, by the way, brothers and sisters, so many of us we feel miserable on a very regular basis in our lives. We feel discontent. We feel uncomfortable. We feel that we we, we, we 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 are unsure of ourselves or what's going on or what's going to happen. We, we, we become deeply distressed by circumstances and realities. The question that any one of us has to ask ourselves as we're experiencing those experiences, where is my heart? Do I have, am I in a place where my spiritual heart is connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a way to bring me life, relief, health? So my my spiritual breath can be regulated and normalized. We have oxygen coming in and out. You know, those who, who may have experienced a shortness of breath and how suffocating that is. But when the spiritual heart is alive and functioning and breathing in and out, and it just, you feel relief and calm. By what? Billah. You know? In the remembrance of Allah, the heart becomes tranquil. Because you know the one of the Salihin they say, One of the Salihin said that Allah does not look upon a heart. And if in that heart Allah sees that this heart is consumed with the dunya, concerned about the dunya, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will do nothing but bring them maqt. What is maqt? An yatrukahu wa nafsa. That Allah will just leave that person be to themselves. I'll just leave you to yourself. You know, if, you, if what, you know, what one wants so badly is this dunya, and that what one is so concerned about, mahmumun wa mashghulun, like worried and concerned and thoughtful about the dunya, this created realm, the place of where the physical body comes from and will be subsumed within. And that's all I care about, the material aspect of my reality. And I'm stressed about my job and worried about my income and, and worried about my health and my children, all these dunyawi things and just absorbed in it. And how much more am I going to get of it? And, and I need more and I need more and I need more and I just want a little bit more. And I just want to get out of this situation into that situation. And that's all my hem. Neglecting my spiritual heart, neglecting my connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not seeing the divine majesty and magnificence in the realities of this dunya, not witnessing what is beyond the surface level that is experienced, then the result perhaps may be that Allah will leave people to themselves. And that is when we become completely vulnerable. We become completely compromised because you and I, we can, we can barely exist, barely exist as it is, 
and we only exist by the purity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sitr, his divine covering and lutfi's subtle grace. And if that is taken from us, the pathway is very problematic, very painful. You enter into a place in life where you feel that I just can't get out of this rut. Ma'ishatan dunka, as Allah says, you know, the, the, the life becomes so decrepit in its nature and it's just heavy and thick. Well, the question is, well, what does Allah see in my heart? You know, and maybe if if I'm and maybe if I feel like I'm there, some of us maybe we may feel like you know, I feel like I'm there right now. I'm listening to you and I feel that's where I am. Well, I need to get into the spiritual emergency room, <laughs> you know. And and I you know I need to go stat and and cold blue and 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 bring my and, and bring my heart back to life. I need to do istighfar and tawbah. I need to seek forgiveness and repent. And this is why Ibn Allah saying that you know this person does not find sadness. They don't find sadness. They don't find regret at the abandonment. Of, 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 of the deeds and that they're supposed to fulfill and they don't find sadness in the face of, of those realities and that I need to work on my spiritual heart I have to bring it back to life that has to be the focal point of what I do and who I am if I hope to come to life but even more importantly than being spiritually alive in this dunya because you know sometimes we, we, we also when sometimes when we speak about spirituality we place it only in the you know the the context of the dunya and how to attain goodness in this life it's there's something far more important by the way than just being good in this life it's the salvation of the afterlife illa man atallaha biqalbin salim except for those who come to allah with a sound heart so with that inshallah i wanted to read to you the the sharh the explanation of Sidi ahmed zarruq Al-Fasi, who passed away in 899 of the Hijri, I wanted to read to you his explanation of this wisdom because I find it in its full explanation very beautiful and meaningful and informative about how we can think about the particularities of this wisdom. He says that from the signs in, in, in explaining from the, the beginning of the hikmah min alamati mawti al-qalb from the signs of the death of the heart um, are these then realities the, the lack of sadness and the lack of regret? He says that is because of three matters. Number one, ahaduha, أن غذاء القلب إنما هو الذكر والموافقة that the true nourishment of the heart is remembrance and being and living in accordance with what Allah has decreed. فإذا فقد منه تعطش لهما إن كان حيا. And if these two things the remembrance and being in accordance with the divine command, fulfilling what Allah has asked us to fulfill, and you know, staying away from what Allah has prohibited us. If these things are missing, then the spiritual heart that is alive will thirst for them. So the spiritual heart that is alive will say, Allahu Akbar, Salah, I need, like, I haven't prayed. I, I, oh my God! I miss salah. You know, it's 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 about to be maghrib. I haven't prayed asr yet. My heart trembles. I rush. I run. You know, I'm I'm gonna miss an obligation that Allah asked me to fulfill. That thing that's gonna connect me to Allah. That's gonna garner me divine pleasure. That's going to in, that's going to ensure that I attain. So that reality ensues in the heart. So it it creates what a sense of of grief and worry. And 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 also. The reality that should ensue that if I do something that I'm not supposed to do, I feel in my spiritual heart, I feel I feel hurt, I feel sad, I feel regretful. How can I do this? How could I how could I disobey Allah in such a fashion? So that shows that because that, that shows this heart is still alive and, and, and it needs the, 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 the nourishment of these realities. The second, he says, أن الحياتة, that he says that true life تقتضي الإحساس بالأشياء. That true life necessitates that you feel things. Like, you know, if, if, if you just have a cadaver 
and you go and you poke and you prod and you cut and you burn, that cadaver will not flinch because in, in the physical life, it's dead. That's it. There's The heart is not functioning. The brain isn't functioning. So it's dead. But a sign of life is that you feel something, you know, you feel something, you, you get smacked, you feel it, you get poked, you get prodded, you feel it, etc. So he says, أَنَّ الْحَيَاةَ تَقْتَضِي الْإِحْسَاسَ بِالْأَشْيَاءِ فَمَتَى أَحَسَّ الْقَلْبُ بِالْحَسَنِ وَالْقَبِيحِ فَهُوَ حَيٌّ And when the heart feels, experiences, and feels the good or the ugly, then it is alive. And if they don't, then it is dead. You know, and <laughs> you have this in many cultures. It's like, I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. And this person just completely oblivious. Like, are you alive? You know, or, you know, someone does something really egregious, really harsh, and they don't even flinch. And the person will say, oh, انت بتحسش? You know, the, you don't feel anything. You just did that to a person. You hurt your wife. You know, you made her cry. You were so belligerent. You were so aggressive. You don't even care. Into betchisish, you don't feel your heart. The heart is not tender. The heart is not alive. You know, it doesn't interact with. It doesn't react to goodness and ugliness. It's a sign of a dead heart. الثالث أن الحياة يتأثر بما يرد عليه من حسن أو قبيح والميت لا يحس بذلك. The same in the, in the same thread that the the person who's alive experiences and feels you know and 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 things come upon them in a way that is impactful and the dead that is not their reality and then he says الحزن, the reality of sadness because ibn atala says uh, the lack of sadness when something passes that you're supposed to do he says Min al-jarira, that is when the inward state finds constriction. That's the haqiqah of huzn because what has happened externally. And that reality is upon three uh, angles. Ahaduha khawfu iqab Allah. That <clears throat> number one, the reality of sadness should be it is the fear of the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That that Punishment, the, the the mercy, by the way, in punishment, is that it awakens the heart, because as human beings, you know, we are people who react to incentives, but we also react to threats. That's just a part of our human psychology, and so from the rahma of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, is he is he is he puts disciplinary measures that are very harsh at times. To awaken our spiritual heart so we can react to it. It's like, oh my God, if I don't do this, that's going to happen. And that's healthy. Hope and fear. You know, we vacillate between hope and fear. And those are the two wings of the believer. And that's very healthy. People should not, you know, not want fear and only want hope. No, hope is good, but there is such a thing as false hope. And so what balances out hope is fear. And that's why Ibn, uh, Sayyidina Abu Bakr, uh, you know, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with him. Uh, he he would say that if my foot was in Jahannam, if I had one foot in Jahannam and another foot out of Jahannam, I would have a deep hope in my heart that that second foot won't follow and that the one that's in will come out. I still have hope. But if I have one foot in Jannah and one foot out of Jannah, that I would fear that my second foot will not follow. So that fear exists. And that keeps him what balanced, and so the be believer finds spiritual health and wellness in the balance of hope and fear. And so, number one, he says the reality of sadness is the fear of the punishment of Allah. Number two, min ajli fawati thawabi is that I don't want to miss out. I have FOMO, you know, fear of missing out. I don't want to miss out on the reward of Allah. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has told me that if you know, la ilaha illallah. It, 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 fills, it fills that which is in between the heavens and the earth. You know, you know, two words that are that are uh, uh, you know light on the tongue but heavy in the scale of reward. Subhanallah wa bihamdih, subhanallah al azim, glorified be Allah and praise, glorified be Allah the Great. 
And the list goes on. You know, you pray your five prayers. What happens? You pray your meritorious acts, your sunan. What happens? You recite the Quran. What happens? You recite one letter of the Quran. You receive all these rewards. You know, you you make istighfar. You receive all these rewards. You send salawat upon Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. You receive all these rewards. You wake up a little bit before fajr and you pray two rakaat. You pray your wit. You receive all these rewards. You make dhikr. You receive these rewards. Rewards. You give sadaqah. You receive reward. You take care of your parents. You receive reward. Opportunities of reward that are endless. And so the fear, the the sadness that should overcome me is, wow, look at all that reward that I've missed out on. Ramadan is coming around the corner. You know, 40 something days to go. And we don't want to miss out on the reward of Ramadan because the reward of Ramadan is unparalleled. It's endless in its nature. The fast, the reward of fasting is something that Allah doesn't even give a number for how much reward is there. And so you and I, if we feel right now, you know, oblivious to this or blase about it or just like apathetic, we got to catch our hearts because the lack of sadness. Or the lack of concern is problematic. May Allah bring health back to our hearts, Ya Rabb. Number three, he says, لِأَنَّهُ عَلَامَةَ الصَّرْفِ عَنْ بَابِ That the lack of sadness is an indication that I'm not at the door of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, if I if I hurt your feelings, you're my, you're my close friend and I hurt your feelings. And, and, and I'm not there knocking on your door. Asking you to forgive me because I love you and I know you love me and I really, I'm really, you know, sad and and bothered that I hurt your feelings, and so my spirit, my psychological, emotional apparatus is awake in a way where I come to you seeking seeking your forgiveness because and so I sit at your door and say I'm not leaving till you forgive me. I don't. I'm not going to stop text messaging you until you forgive me. I'm not going to stop calling you until you forgive me. What does that show? That shows that my heart is alive. But the lack, and so imagine my relationship with Allah, the lack of my being at the door of Allah, begging of Allah, asking of Allah, yearning for Allah, seeking Allah, doing whatever it is, mimma kasabat aydina, doing whatever it is with our hands, we do whatever it is we do. And we're not even thinking about the door of Allah. We don't even really care what Allah thinks per se. And that is a worrisome sign about the reality of the heart. The reality is... That you and I every day should be spending good portions of our spiritual time with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just begging Him at the door. You know, saying, Waqifuna bibabika fala taruddana. Ya Allah, we're standing at your door. Don't turn us away. Don't reject us. And then Sidi Ahmad Zarukh says, Wa nadamu attalahuf ala al al mustaqbah. You know, nadam, regret is. Is when you look upon the this, the ugly reality in front of you, the regret that you feel when you you just feel this 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 really bad taste in your mouth about that sin. Audhu billah. What is that sin I just did? How, I just feel I feel disgusted by it, you know, because it's ugly. Sin is ugly, by the way. No matter how much sin may be beautified by the shaitan, zuyyana lahum. Su'u amali that the, the shaitan you know has beautified the ugliness of, of these of these deeds. He made them seem so beautiful. But the believer with a heart that's alive looks upon that sin and says, A'udhu billah. That's disgusting. I you know I feel I feel I feel really bad about this. And through that nadam, through that regret, the servant uses it to to, to make the corrective and yastadrik. Huh? To, to, to make the corrective and, and to catch themselves and say, okay, I got I to gotta turn back. That's what tawbah is. That's why Prophet ﷺ says, النَّدَمُ tawbah You know, regret is repentance. Because the reality is, as the scholars have said, that when you are regretful, when you have nadam, then all of the other you know, conditions of tawbah will be fulfilled. When you regret, then you will stop. When you will regret, you will commit not to return. But if you say, okay, I'm not going to do this, and you stop doing it, but you internally haven't really regretted, then the possibility is what? You're going to go right back to it. So we need spiritual hearts that are awakened in a way that will feel the regret so that we never go back. And when we do, and if we do, and very often we will do things that we shouldn't do, then the nedam is present. The regret is there. And the regret is 
is one that is coupled with a deep sense of, Ya Allah, forgive me. I shouldn't have done this. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry to have done this, Ya Allah. I'm sorry to have disappointed you. I'm sorry to have put you, let you down, Ya Allah. I know who you are and I know who I am. And I come to you and I say to you, Allah, forgive me. Forgive me, Ya Allah. And the Prophet Sallallahu says, Man sarratuhu, hasanatuhu, wa sa'atuhu, sayyatuhu, fahuwa mu'min. And those who find joy in their hasanat and their good deeds, and those who are pained by their sinful acts, then they are a believer. We have to rejoice. قُلْ بِفَضْلِ اللَّهِ وَبِرَحْمَتِي فَبِذَلِكَ فَلْيَفْرَحُوا you know, we have to rejoice. We have to rejoice in goodness, in good deeds. You, Allah, Allah blesses you that you pray and that you like to pray and that you approach prayer or even you sometimes begrudgingly pray, but prayer is something in your life. Rejoice in that reality. Say, Alhamdulillah. You know, the Quran is something that is in your life. Alhamdulillah. You know, you give sadaqah. You, you, you maintain you, your, your duties and responsibilities. Alhamdulillah, that's good. Find joy in that. Because it's in accordance with what Allah loves. Because Allah loves and Allah hates. And we want to do everything that Allah loves. And we want to stay away from everything that Allah hates. And you should also find pain in your heart for the sayyat, the sins, the things that are ugly. No matter how enticing they are, no matter how attractive they are, no matter how exciting they are, no matter how much you long for them, no matter how much you like them, hate them. Because they're, they're what Allah hates. May Allah protect us and guide us, Ya Rabb. And he says, فَهُوَ مُؤْمِنٌ This, that person is a believer. وَقَالَ عَبْدُ اللَّهِ بْنِ مَسْعُودِ الْمُؤْمِنُ يَرَى ذُنُوبَهُ كَأَنَّهُ فِي أَصْلِ جَبَلٍ يَخَافُ أَنْ يَقَعَ عَلَيْهِ That the believer, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud says, the believer is like the one who's standing at the bottom of a mountain, fearing and that this mountain is, fearing that this mountain is going to fall on them. Right, that is the, 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 the believer with regards to their sins. They view their sins as a mountain that's about to crush them. And he says, وَالْفَاجِرُ يَرَى ذُنُوبَهُ كَذُبَابٍ وَقَعَ عَلَىٰ أَنْفِهِ فَقَالَ بِهِ هَكَذَا فَأَطْرَاهُ You know, the, the fajr, the transgressor, the one who doesn't really care and just goes hard into whatever it is they do, they view their sins like a fly, that all they have to do is just hish away so it goes away. And so... It is said in the uh, previous texts, إِذَا أَرَادَ اللَّهُ بِعَبْدٍ خَيْرًا نَصَبَ فِي قَلْبِهِ نَائِحَةً وَإِذَا أَرَادَ اللَّهُ بِعَبْدٍ شَرًا نَصَبَ فِي قَلْبِهِ مِزْمَارًا You know, that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves, if, wants, if He wants goodness for a servant, then He'll place in the heart of a servant, you know, something that screams in, like in an alarming fashion to keep you to keep you awake and alive. But if he wants badness for a servant, then he'll place, you know, the the mizmar, the, the, the musical in the flute kind of instrument that will that will kind of keep you lulled in a state of heedlessness. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be brought to life and to never be allowed to die. Ya Allah bring our hearts to life and keep our hearts alive upon this deen. And Ya Allah, you have you have been so generous and kind to us. And you have brought us to life with La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah. We ask you to not deprive us of this source of life and to keep us embedded in the nourishment of that beautiful guidance of the Quran and the Sunnah and what has been passed down to us from our teachers, Ya Rabbil Alameen. And inshallah, brothers and sisters, next week, as I'm going to take some questions, then we'll close. But next week, hikmah number 49 is something that, you know, will we'll, th this, this hikmah, 48, it should strike some fear in our hearts. But number 49 will bring the hope. لا يعظم الذنب عندك عظمة تصدك عن حسن الظن بالله Don't let a sin become so big in your life that it stops you from having a good opinion of Allah. And this is a big issue. It's a big issue with people, with, the, with us when we sin when we sin and how we react to our sins and what our sins mean to us and how our sins very often hold us back. So inshallah, number, hikmah number 49 is what we will address uh, next week, bi-idhnillahi ta'ala. But uh, I want to take some of the uh, questions before we close. Uh, so please 
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, help us to be together always in khair. Barakallahu feekum wa jazakumullah khair ajma'in. Akramakumullah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all. We are, I appreciate you. May Allah bless you as well. Barakallahu uh, feekum ajma'in. How do we balance uh, between uh, the two, the spiritual and the dunya? Uh, balancing between the two, my dear sister, is that number one, we live in the dunya, and so our limbs, our limbs are going to be negotiating the affairs of this dunya. You know, we 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 buy and we sell and we change and we bring and we pick up and we take and we you know we 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 engage in realities, right? And and so we have to do, and we are going to do. We are actors. We are doers in this world. But the question of the spiritual life is the question of the heart, and so it's a matter of always thinking about my intention. Why am I doing what I'm doing? It's contemplating the why question. It's making sure that I'm in a, I have a regular diet of remembrance, in a regular diet of uh, seeking forgiveness, in a regular diet of recitation of the Quran that will keep my spiritual heart alive. I listen to lectures and, and talks that will keep my heart alive. You know, I come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in my prayers. I pray my five prayers. You know, I stop and I, I hold my sibha. I make my dua, uh, uh, you know, in the morning and in the night. I do my nightly awrad, you know, my litanies, in my morning litanies. So there is a whole spiritual routine uh, that happens in the heart and in the mind that will ensure that the, that we become balanced. Yeah, you're going to work and you're going to accomplish things and you're going to go to school and, and you're going to take care of your family and you're going to inshallah get married and have children you're going to have all these realities that are dun that you know really make up what the dunya is but but my life doesn't stop at that just my kids my family you know uh my health that's it uh my money my job my car my home no it's it's the deeper purpose beyond that reality that is where the mind and the heart have to kick in. And that's why every single day, you know, we're living like that. You know, we, 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 and, we, we and we have to put a routine around our salah. And uh, when we wake up, the first thing we say, you know, Alhamdulillah, ladhi ahyana. Alhamdulillah, you brought us to life, Ya Allah, after you have taken us. And certainly we're going to return to you. And before you sleep, you know, Bismika Rabbi, Wada'atu Jambi, in your name, Ya Allah, I place myself. You know, on, on this, on this, uh, you know, I, I lie down. Uh, for if you keep my soul, arhamha, wa in arsaltaha, and if you have mercy on my soul, if you keep it this night, but if you give it back to me, then preserve it and protect it. So we have to live in those meanings, in those practices, in those spirits, because that's what keeps us truly spiritually alive. I hope that helps, inshallah. We yakum barakallahu fikum ajma'in. Allahumma amin ya Rabb. I feel like there are some recurring sins and bad habits I haven't been able to leave despite trying for years. Um, uh, how can I keep trying this without getting depressed? Um, dear questioner is asking uh, a very important question, which is, um, you know, how do I ensure that uh, the, that that the bad habits that I commit? And the, the sins that I do, that I'm not leaving, right? Because this person saying, I'm not able to leave. No, we are able to leave. We may, may not be leaving them, right? Out of certain reasons, weaknesses or whatever. But alhamdulillah, we are able. No one should convince themselves that they are not able. I don't care if you've been sitting and doing a particular sin for 30 years, 40 years. No, we're able to. It's just a matter we haven't figured out how to. That's a different, that's a different mental orientation, right? Psychological orientation. But how can I keep trying without getting depressed? The questioner is asking. No, don't ever get depressed. Because depression in the spiritual sense in this case is a function of not realizing who Allah is and what Allah expects. And and you know, maybe this today's hikmah is, is intense. It, it it was meant to kind of shock the system a little bit and make me think like, is my heart dead or alive? Yeah, and we should be, sometimes you got to have that conversation with the doctor and the doctor says like, hey, listen, you're not doing well. You're not healthy. You got to, you got to, you got to fix certain behaviors. You got to take your medication because this is not going to end up well. You can't always be told everything is honky dory and great, right? So hikmah number 48 is to do that. Now, with that said, 
Hikmah number 49 is going to teach us, <laughs> the next wisdom is going to teach us, how do we ensure that our sins don't result in us losing hope, but that we realize there is always a capacity to have a good opinion of Allah. And that's what the next wisdom is about, inshallah. So we're certainly going to delve, delve deep into that, but never lose hope in Allah. Because Allah says that he, no one lose hope, in, lose hope in me except those who, who reject me. And know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ecstatic when we repent. And He loves that we turn back to Him. And know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He knows that we will sin. كُلُّ بَنِي آدَمَ خطأ. Every one of us sins. وَخَيْرُ الْخَطَّائِنَ التَّوَابُونَ And the best of those who sin are those who repent. And the list goes on. So, you know, next week we're going to talk about what does it mean to have حُسْنِ الظَّنَّ بِاللَّهِ with regards to our sin. What does it mean to have a good opinion of Allah with regards to our sins. <clears throat> Barakallahu feekum ajma'in, zakumullah khair ajma'in, barakallahu feekum. Um, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase us all. Um, uh, Sister Sana is saying, continue istighfar and tawbah, absolutely. You know, every single day, astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayh, don't ever stop. Um, you know, and, and we'll talk about these in, inshallah, but just maintain your litanies. This is why I said your spiritual heart needs its nourishment. And the nourishment of the heart is through the things that bring it life and how it, what are the things that bring of life that which Allah and His Messenger وسلم, have called us towards. And Alhamdulillah, Allah has been so generous by sending us the Prophet. He's been so generous by giving us the Quran. He's been so generous by giving us distinct and clear guidance. We know what to do, by the way. It's just a matter of doing it. The, the regiment, the process is clear as day. It's right there. Alhamdulillah. We have, and Allah has passed it down to us generation after generation and taught it to us. So we have to, you know, <clears throat> we have to get up and, 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 and do it, inshallah ta'ala. Barakallahu feekum wa jazakumullah khair. May Allah bless you all and increase us all. May we find ourselves in the best of states tonight. Tomorrow is the day of Jummah. Tonight is the evening of Jummah. We ask Allah to purify our hearts today in a way that is prepared for the beauty and the bounties of the day of Jummah. May Allah grant us all the blessings of the day of Jummah and the light of the day of Jummah and the healing of the day of Jummah and the <clears throat> abundance and the reward of the day of Jummah. And may we amongst be, be amongst those who send the most abundant of salawat upon Sayyiduna Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so we attain the greatest gifts and the bounties that are in store for those who have sent salawat upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and we know that those who spend send the most salawat upon Sayyiduna Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam they will be those who are closest to the beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the afterlife may Allah make us amongst them barakallahu feekum wa jazakumullah khair wa sallillahum ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen